uh, Dreamwalker here, sharing my story about uh, my near-death experience. I was about seven years old um, in a hospital in Panama, and I was very sick. I was there for quite a while, and they gave me an experimental drug called Lisa Hill, and that drug felt like my whole body was burning, just a lot of excruciating pain that I just needed to get out of there. So basically what ended up happening was um, I started convulsing and I had a lot of pain and then I, it was like all of a sudden I saw myself. It was no longer me. I was looking at myself and it took me a while to figure out that that was me. You know, I was thinking, wow, that little boy is in trouble. You know, I seen all these doctors and nurses working on me. I said, well, that little boy kind of looks like me. Mm. But how can that be me? Because I'm over here. But that's me. And, and you know, I, I went back and forth like that for like 15 times. And finally, I um, realized that that was me. And I was uh, floating. I started floating higher and higher looking at this scene, hospital room, with all these doctors working on me. And uh, it, it was, the trip was instantaneous, okay? I went from being conscious to being conscious. You never lose consciousness when you die. You're always conscious. And um, so as this, as I started to float, and it was kind of like a tractor beam, you know, kind of slowly making me float upwards, this cube of the hospital room uh, started getting further and farther away and um, to where I couldn't see it. It got to the point where it was gone and then around that it was just complete, total darkness. And this darkness was so dark that imagine you putting your hand in front of your face like this and not being able to see it. It was that dark. It was scary because when I blinked my eyes and I closed my eyes, I saw darkness. When I opened my eyes, I saw darkness because I didn't have any eyelids, you know? Um, so it was scary. It was very scary. Um, and then it got to the point when that, when that room floated away completely, it got to the point where I was just by myself, surrounded by total darkness. And that's when it's super scary. But then I'm looking around, I'm looking around, I'm like, what's going on? And it was almost like I turned around, okay? I don't know how to describe it except that I turned around and way off into the distance, I see this point of light in this, in all this darkness, a point of light, just a little dot. So I started walking towards this point. I, you know, I didn't have a body, but I did the motion of I'm walking. And as I got towards this light, it got close. I got closer and closer and closer and closer, and all the darkness around it, and this light being so bright, that's what made it look like a tunnel, okay? But it was not actually a tunnel, because the closer I got to it, I realized that this light was not a light, but it was a person made out of light, okay? Awesome. Everything was light. The face was light. The robe, I could see a white robe, a long white robe. The robe was made out of light. His arms, everything was made out of light. And he was like, he had his hands wide open, as wide as you can get your hands open. And it felt like he was going to give me a big old hug <laughs> when I got there, right? And I was just moving closer and closer and closer and closer. I'm like, wow, what, this is amazing. And all of a sudden, there was communication, Okay. Now, it wasn't like communication down here, but it was a communication. I heard like a powerful thought, you know, most powerful thought or voice I've ever heard that said, stop. So I just stopped, you know, and it felt like I was standing on a square, like just totally still. Mm -hmm. And I heard, I heard this person, this being say, if you keep coming forward towards me you're not going to be able to go back right but if you go back you're going to end up up here anyways okay hmm. um what do you want to do 
okay? And and I also want to say one part I, I didn't talk about um, was when I first got as close as I could uh, after I stopped, it's almost like, um, you know, this being made out of light kind of pointed like this to the side. He kind of made his, his hand like this. And I looked over there at what he was pointing at, and I saw a, a scene of the hospital room. And I saw me laying on the bed, and my mom had her arms wrapped around me, and she was crying and bawling, and you know, it was just like, oh, man, this is horrible, you know? And I, and, and I told this being of light, you know, I called God, <laughs> I said, I, you know, he asked me the question, what do you want to do? And I said, well, I really don't want to, I don't want to leave. I really want to stay, right? But if you say I'm going to end up here anyways, eventually, then I want to be with my mom. You know, my decision is I want to go back and be with my mom. So when I made that decision, very soon after that, I mean, my last, you know, little bit of time but very soon after that I made that decision I felt like I fell from a building mm -hmm. but it was like faster than you could fall from a building I mean it was like you know like lightning right. and I had that falling sensation and I landed back in my body and uh, you know I woke up 18 hours later and uh, you know I, I told my mom what what had happened? I didn't really understand it. We didn't really talk much about it after that. And it wasn't until later that I was able to connect some of the pieces, you know, as to what was going on. But yeah, they, they were basically doing uh, experiments on me on with different pharmaceutical drugs. Uh, when my mom would leave to go home, they had that one doctor and one nurse. Those were the only two people. Mm -hmm. And they would do different things. So that's my story. But one last <clears> thing. Um, when I was in front of God, in the presence of God, I felt so much love mm -hmm. and so much peace, okay, that I realized that it doesn't matter what this life, what kind of trouble or suffering we go through in this life. You could pick the worst possible life, okay, and this next place is so good and being in the presence of God is so good. That it, you can even compare it. You know, I don't care if you have no arms and legs, worst possible life. It is so great being in the presence of Heavenly Father. Just being in His presence. You could be in His presence for all eternity and be totally in bliss and happy and joy and peaceful. You don't even have to go to heaven. Mm -hmm. You know, heaven mm -hmm. is being in His presence, I think, because it felt that great. And, and it felt, and one last thing, it felt familiar. Like, like, um, like, it was the first time I was seeing him, but it was also, like, a familiar feeling, like, this wasn't the first time, you know, that, that I had seen him. And um, and that, that's what I got from it, you know, just, uh, he loves me, we, he loves all of us. And, and, one, and another thing, when I came back down here, when I was looking through the Bible as I grew up, and I learned about Jesus and how he transfigured himself and describe what the transfiguration looked like, I was like, whoa, it being made out of light, that's what I saw. So, you know, Jesus kind of matched what I saw, and um, and it just gives me strength and hope and peace to know that, hey, we're, that's what, what comes next, you know. So thank you for letting me share my story. Um, this is Dream Walker. Hope you've enjoyed it. Talk to you later. Salute. Very interesting. How old is he?